Hi, uh, this is Todd Zarwell, and uh, I wanted to show you uh, some little changes I've made to the oblique cross-cylinder calculator that I have uh, on IDOC. Now, it's pretty simple. You, first of all, type in a contact lens power in this first box. So if I'm working with a contact that's a minus 8, minus, uh, let's say, 275 axis 80, you can just type that in. And as you go, it will automatically parse the information and put the um, uh, powers on the meridians on the optical cross on the contact. So you can kind of visualize how the powers line up on the lens. And then to denote the rotation, uh, you can uh, just click on the lens. That's one way to do it. And it will move to where your uh, rotation is. And uh, sometimes that's a little bit easier than saying it's 10 degrees or 20 degrees because sometimes we're not the best judges of that. Um, you can also um, click these arrows to adjust it by one degree increments or these double arrows will adjust it by uh, 10 degree increments. And you can just put the lens where it was sitting on the patient's eye. The upper refraction works pretty simple, pretty similar I should say. Uh, you just type in the upper refraction Let's say minus 1, minus 0.75 axis, let's say 97 in this case. You can use plus or minus still here. And um, again, it just puts the powers on an optical cross. You can kind of look at how they line up and kind of get a sense of why the calculation comes up with what it does. Of course, um, the math involves some trigonometry. And that's how we get the final result. But the final result should show the next best trial lens to try on this patient. And of course, this is kind of like the theoretical best trial lens. And this is how the calculator has worked for a long time now. But I realize that we're still leaving a fair amount of work for, um, for the practitioner to, to do. Uh, for example, once you get these numbers, well, you look at them and say, well, this is axis 85. You know, most contacts don't come in axis 85. They come in 80 or 90. And the cell power is a 3.25. I know that my uh, contacts don't uh, come in that high of a cell power. So what you can do is you can type in what contact lens you had on the patient's eye. For example, if it was an AccuView Oasis for astigmatism, you can just type in that and hit Enter. And it'll tell you what the closest lens that is available uh, to this, uh, you know, ideal contact lens. And in this case, our axis is 90. Our cell power, the highest one it comes in is a 275. And, uh, you know, it tells you what, if you work with this lens, how close you're getting to the, you know, to the ideal lens. And in this case, we'd have about three quarters of an adapter of cell uncorrected. And, um, you know, if that works out like it should, our potential vision would be 20, 30 minus, which, you know, with this prescription, you might find acceptable and might be worth a try. If it's leaving more uncorrected um, uh, prescription, um, for example, if I made this a 175, it will, you know, of course, there's more uncorrected astigmatism, uh, the best vision is more in the 2050 range, and it gives you some advice. You know, the best lens in this brand seems to be a little inadequate correcting the vision, and you might want to consider another lens. So it gives a, you know, a sense of where you should go from here. If you are looking at the recommendations saying, well, why did I recommend this? You can look at the full listing for this lens by clicking the link, and it'll show you that you know, in this case, the max cell power is at 275. It only comes in 10 degree steps. The max uh, amount of nearsightedness power is a minus nine. And it kind of gives you a sense of, you know, why it recommended the lens that it did. So that is the oblique cross cylinder calculator. And, you know, I'm always trying to find ways to make things a little easier for us while we're seeing our patients. And I hope that, uh, Hope you guys find that helpful.